you own a Focus Odin 5 F3 and you need to change the wheels out on the bed because it's giving you problems, stay tuned. This video is for you. Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, I'm gonna show you how to change out the wheels on your Focus Odin 5 F3. The reason why I'm doing this is I'm having problems with this 3D printer. And you can see my review here. I gave a really high review. I really enjoyed it, really like it. Well, I'm up to print number 80. And I noticed in the beginning, it was a little bit of a gap in the middle of the bed. And I was having a little bit of a problem with adhesion. Well, it's slowly getting worse and I don't know why. So what I decided is I noticed on the bed it was wiggling quite a bit. I like when I pushed on the bed, you could see it kind of doot 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 doot, kind of like that thing. That's not a good sign. So what I decided to do today is change out the wheels. I have some extra wheels. I'm gonna change out the wheels on this bed, and I think it'll be a drastic improvement because I already tried tightening down the wheels a little bit more, and that didn't work. So I'm gonna take this part again and actually just change out the wheels and see if that will make a difference. This is what my prints are looking like right now. No adhesion. I have to print a brim in order for stuff not pop up and that all comes down to bed leveling it's just not sticking we're not getting that smush so my goal is if I change out the wheels on this the middle will be lower so I'll get that smush now I'm getting kind of the corners leveled but it keeps getting out of whack every time I go around to the five points and if you don't know what I'm talking about please take a look at this video right here it tells you how to level this 3d printers bed take a look at that video that'll explain it but when I go to the points they all seem a little out of whack every time I go around the bed and the middle's always high. So I'm hoping this will be the quick fix. So let's get over to the workbench and take a look at this 3D printer. All right, so here we are with the printer. The glass bed is off. I did try sanding down these because that was the first recommendation they said for trying to get this level was I did start on it when it was on the bed. Not a good idea. I took them off and then japped them into a screw gun, sand them down that way because doing it this way, I saw I was wearing these out, which that shouldn't affect anything that much. At the bottom, you're gonna loosen these up. And we try to do the fronts at the same time. Just keep spinning them until they come off. Take those off, put them off to the side. If you go underneath here, you can pop the screws up. And we're just gonna take the screws out for now, like so. Now we're gonna do the same to the back. And we're gonna go in the downward position at the same time. All right, so once you got the wheels off, we're gonna push underneath here and get the screws up, like so, take them out, and now you'll be able to remove the heat bed. Just remember that it is attached back here, and we don't wanna mess with that, so we're just gonna put that like that off to the side and kind of out of the way. We'll take the springs off here, and we'll put them off to the side as well. So your printer should look like this now. The toolkit that you got when you receive the printer, that's what you're gonna use. It has all the Allen keys you're gonna need. And the first thing I'm gonna do is this one right here. I'm gonna loosen this up. Pull that out, loosen this one up. Okay, and we'll be able to open that up now. And you got one over here, and that's a different size. That's this size right here, right in the track there. And you'll see there's one screw over here, and then there's a screw over here. This is the one we're gonna go for right here. We're gonna go ahead and loosen that up. All right, once it's loose, you pull it out. Pull it out like so, put it off to the side. We'll bring this bed back a little bit. The next screw you're gonna loosen is this one over here on this track. Just gonna loosen it a little bit, like so. All right, so from here, once you take these two bolts out, we're gonna pop this off to the side, loosen that one, push this in, Scoot this back a little bit. You'll notice you can't take it out because it's still connected to the belt. On the belt plate, you want to take these two screws out. So we're going to go ahead and loosen those up. Okay, once that's loose, now you can push it to the back here. This is no longer hanging on, and we'll pull this off. And now the tray is removed and we can have access to these wheels, which are doing some funky stuff. I know this one feels like crap. It just feels like something's off, like this one's not running as smooth. So I'm thinking I just need to change them out. The wheels are problems. And this is after about 100 prints, which my Ender 3, I have, I know, almost 400 and something. I have a lot of prints on it and I have problems with wheels. Sometimes these manufacturers just use cheap wheels and I think that's this, this case. Or maybe it was just a bad batch of wheels. I have no idea, but I'm going to go ahead and change these out. There's a screw and then a wall washer that we need to take off and on this side there's an allen key so we got to kind of do it at the same time and again all the tools were provided for you so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this bad boy on this side 
And I'm gonna use the Allen key, and I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. And then just pop it out. And you wanna remember, you have a washer, a screw on this side, you have this, and then you have another washer. You want to remember how this was done, because you're going to put it back exactly the same. So there's the washer for that one, and then you have the bearing, and we'll take that bearing out. It looks like it's got a little wear on it. I didn't think these were that bad, but I feel like the spin on these aren't that good. So we're just going to go ahead and toss that, and we'll put a new one on. Now this one is with the, the eccentric nut, I believe it's called. Basically, this nut is off-centered, and that's how you would turn the nut. You can see when I turn it, it's off-center. And that's how you tighten the wheels, because when you turn this, it tightens the wheels up against the rail. So we want to make sure we keep these on the right side. And that's why I say when you're doing this and you're taking them off, put the other wheel back on. So I'm going to go get my wheels. I'm going to put it together as I'm doing it, so that way we don't get anything confused or anything messed up. These are my new wheels, and I'm going to put them off to the side for now, so that way I know which ones are new and which ones are used. The same size. A little different. I wonder how this is going to go. You can see the wear on that one. Alright, so now we're going to put these back together. And we're just going to put this bolt right here. Goes in. Then it's going to be a washer. Eccentric nut or adjustment nut if I'm saying it wrong. I know someone will correct me out there on YouTube world. And when you're putting the nut on, make sure that you have the lip going in. That's the way you want it. So that way it's flush up against that. And it's centering and holding it. And that's how we want to do it. Then we put this one on. Like so. Alright, now we're going to get this right here. Right into place. Give it a little twist so it's on there. Take this and we'll put it on the bottom of the nut so that when we're turning it, we use the other nut to help it. And we can just turn it like so. Now I'm going to tighten it up at first. Yep, that's good. Tighten it up a little bit more. We'll make sure these are down good. Yeah, that's nice and tight on there, and it's moving nice. No wiggle. We don't want any wiggle in there, and you want it tight. So that's working great. I'm going to do the same for this one, and then we'll go to the other side. Just in case you do encounter this, there is a wash nut in there. Just round it out so that way it's not in the way. Big thing, make sure there's no wobble. Good, now we're gonna move to the other side. These are gonna be a little easier, a little more straightforward because they don't have eccentric nuts on them. Same concept, it's just... Take that off, put that off to the side, pull this out, make sure you hold it in one place. I'm gonna take this apart and there's the washer and that's a spacer. That's what that is right there, a spacer. Take this out and this one's like falling apart. <laughs> This is why I think the wheels are crap, because look how quickly it came apart. Now I'll take this wheel again, you can see on the inside there, just make it straight, Bump. take this, boom, right in there like so, washer, spacer, and the spacer doesn't matter which way you put it on, it matters at this point where you put it on, but, boom, put that in like so, washer, Again, make sure it's tight, no wiggle. I don't want any wiggle. Nice and tight, but loose enough to spin. There you go. Now we'll do the other one, and then we'll put this whole setup back together. All right, so now the wheels are back on. There's no wiggle. Everything is back to normal. All right, so basically what we're gonna do is reverse engineer this. The ones with the adjustment screws go on this side. And we'll go back here with it. Bring it back to the front again. Try and get these back in the grooves just right. And just push this metal piece in to try and align everything. It's gonna be hard for me to show you this, but basically what we're gonna be doing is taking your finger with this black piece right here, and we're gonna be trying to adjust it and put it into place while I put the screws in. It's gonna be hard for me to show you that on camera, so I'm gonna lay this back down. What I like to do is push this right over and try to line it up where you see the screw holes, and then I'm gonna use that finger right there to hold it. And then I'm gonna take one of the screws, push it in, and hand tighten it, like so. And once I get that one in, take the other screw, and go ahead and put it in there and start hand tightening that one as well. Nice and tight, not too tight, not too loose. 
and that should be good to go. And that feels really tight on the bed. There's no wiggle, but we're gonna adjust it. Let's go ahead and put our screws back in. Let's put the back one in first. You get that lined up. And don't forget, you loosen this one up over here, so we'll tighten that down. All right, that's in place, that's in place. Now we'll take this nut and put it in here, and it should wiggle its way back home. We'll push this down here just to give us a little wiggle room. All right, once we get it down there, tighten it up. All right, and that should be in place. So now we have the carriage in here, and this feels a little tight. We don't want it, we want it tight, but we don't want it so tight. And if you remember earlier, I was talking about these adjustment nuts. It's only on one side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that wrench again, and it has a bigger end on it, and we're gonna go ahead and adjust these. And I don't know which way to tell you to turn because it could be at any position. So turn one way, if it gives you too much resistance, try another way. So I'm gonna try this way, and I'm gonna turn this one a little bit. And I, what I like to do is I like to make it loose first to see where I'm at because there's no way to really tell you which way they go. All right, so now this is really loose. I'm going to tighten this end. I don't want to make them too tight, but I don't want to make them too loose. And you just wiggle the back here until you can't wiggle it anymore. All right, so that's not that bad. This one feels like it might be a little too tight. Let's adjust it. Okay, that's too loose. Let's go back a little bit. All right, so I think that's I think that's enough tension on that. Yeah, it's not wiggling, not moving up and down. That feels good to me. Now I'm going to put the bed back onto this unit. I'm going to take this piece here and throw this on top first. And I'll throw the screw through there like so. And I'm going to put the spring on. So it would look like that. And I like to put them all in place first. So again, right here. Boom. Put that into place. Like so. And then take this screw. Put it in there as well. Okay, all those should be looking like that right now and now we're gonna put the bottoms on it so i'm just gonna stick this underneath here right like so i like to pop the screw up a little bit and turn the screw into it and if you're looking at this you should be going into the down position i just get it tight that's it boom pop this back just start it off and then i'll just screw it up to where it just starts to grab same thing with the back here and make sure you put the picture going up so you can see which one's up and which one's down Boom, that one's in. And same thing on this side. I got this all situated. There's different theories, a lot of different theories, on what you should do with the bed from this point as far as how tight the, the screws are. Put them down low enough so that way the nose of the printer doesn't hit into the bed. Regardless of what you do, how far you like to go with your springs, make sure you're making the adjustments in the front here first, like I'm doing, at the same time. So I'm gonna stress these down just in the front at the same time, that way I know they're nice and even. And now I'm gonna do the same thing to the back as well. I'm gonna do that off camera, but you get the idea. All right, that's it. She's all back together now. Bed's all nice and tight. She moves back and forth really nice. All right, that's how you change the wheels on your Focus Odin 5 F3. Unfortunately, that wasn't the only problem that I'm having with this printer. And now I'm not trying to bash Focus. I'm in contact with them right now. We're going back and forth. This did not fix my problem. I'm gonna try other solutions. They weren't gonna send me wheels, which is kind of a bad sign, which I get it. It's a part that wears. They feel they're not responsible for that. But after only 80 prints, when my Ender 3 has done like over 400 prints, and I'll show you what the wheels look like. I mean, and they're still going. So I think something's wrong with the bearings on the V wheels on this machine. Maybe it's just a cheaper brand or, you know, parts problem. I don't know. They are going to send me a bed next and we'll see if that's the problem. Honestly, I think I should change out the wheels on the extruder head next because I think that might be a problem because if it's the same wheels I may have issues with the wheels moving around a lot because I 
see a lot of movement and when I'm going to level a bed, I see that that's a problem. I mean, all 3D printers have problems. I had a problem with my Ender 3 over here. I had to straighten out the actual frame from the factory, the bottom part. I had to loosen it up and flatten it out to make it work better. The fan went bad. I didn't even bother trying to contact them because it was over a year and I don't think they're gonna stand behind it, which I probably should have, but they were cheap enough just to order a new fan. I fixed that. The Ender 3 clone, the Disway, I actually went through hell with this machine and a lot of pieces were stripped and I wind up luckily buying it from Amazon and I just exchanged it, got another one. Had a little bit of problems with this one. Again, it was the frame, it needed to be leveled out from the factory. I guess it was just twisted or they over tightened it. Something was wrong with that aspect, but those machines are printing mint now. You know, troubleshooting these 3D printers, it's a hobby and there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of different theories out there. I mean, I've been reading nonstop. So next week, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change out the wheels on the extruder, so look for that video and we'll see if that makes a difference. I'm also gonna probably have a video on changing out the bed because I wanna see if changing out this bed would make a bigger difference because I'm thinking that that might be the problem. I think they're sending me a bed. They said they're sending me a bed, I'm not sure. But the only thing that they told me was to sand down the screws, which I did, but didn't really do anything. So I don't know, I'm at a loss right now. Very frustrated, at a loss. That's it for me guys. Make sure you like and subscribe if this helped you in any way. And make sure you click on that bell icon if you want to get notified when I make a video. And remember, you could do anything if you put your mind to it. Later guys. You push this in like so, bring the bed to the back and you should be able to lift it out. It's over. That's it guys. I mean there's other videos up there or if you want to do me a huge favor, click the like button or subscribe button is even better.